always difficult, always difficult to say goodbye to one we love with our whole heart. But the thought of not being able to say hello to them again would be unbearable. But thanks be unto God, according to the word of God, we get a chance to say hello again. Those of you who believe the word of God is true, would you put your hands together in the midst of grief, in the midst of pain, and yet we still have a reason to hope, to look forward to seeing Sister Fanny again. She's been described as a loving wife, caring mother, and adoring grandmother. And so let me say to Reggie, rest of the family, um, we, the members of the Mount Olive Church, um, are praying for you, we're praying with you. It's our heart's desire that you have in some way felt the nearness of God and how we have responded to you as best we could in your time of loss. There are many here in this room today we can testify that what you cannot walk through, God will carry you, yeah. you through. Yeah. And so we want you to be encouraged, family. Even as you grieve, even as you mourn, you should grieve. You should mourn. But we want you to know that God will see you through. The family has put together an order of service. We're going to submit to the wishes of the family by following the program as it is printed. At this time, we'll have the reading of both the Old and New Testaments, and then a prayer uh, by Minister Kimberly Tucker. The scripture will be read by Minister Marcel Smith, and then Sister Sandra Sanders will follow with a solo, and then I will return. Let's say amen as we prepare to hear the word of God read. Amen. Good morning. Our Old Testament reading will come from Psalm 23, verses 1 through 4. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Our New Testament reading will come from John chapter 14, verses 1 through 7. Let not your heart, excuse me, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Let us pray. Father God, we come today thanking you for the life of Miss Diggs. Father, we thank you for that loving wife and that caring mother and that adoring grandmother. Father, we thank you for so many lives that she touched through her baking and through her knitting and through her crocheting. We thank you for those lives she touched as she worked in the hospital and those she cared. Father, we know that they're gonna miss her. 
we know they're going to miss all the love and the caring that she gave to them. Father, well, we are thankful and we are grateful today that memories don't have an expiration date. Even now as they sit here and mourn, as tears fall, they can think of the memories that they share with her and they can have a smile on those faces. Their tears would be tears of joy and laughter because she put joy in everyone's life that she touched. Father, we pray that you would bless this family, that you would keep them in your loving arms. And as the days come, Father, as a church family, we pray that we will be your feet, your arms, and your mouth. When they need a shoulder to lean on, we'll be there for them, Father. When they need someone just to hold their hand, Father, we'll be there for them. When they need someone just to talk to, Father, let us be there for them so that they'll never feel that void in their lives, that they'll know that we're there to help them through this trying time that you're going through, Father. And so we thank you today, for we feel your healing right now, Father. We feel your comforting touch going through this place. So heal and comfort this family in their time of need, Father. And we'll be grateful to give your darling son all the praise, the glory, and the honor. And it's his name we pray. Amen. He's been good to me 
been good to me more than this old world or you could ever be he's been good to me he tried all of my tears away Roscoe is going to come with acknowledgments, acknowledgments of cards and condolences. Acknowledgement. All over the world, there are people, special people like you, who make life so meaningful and worthwhile. We are always there when needed as in our bereavement hour, who will always be special in our hearts. May God bless and keep you. Many thanks for everything, and may God create many more special people like you, the family. Wishing you peace. As you remember and mourn your loss, know that you are being thought of with warmth and sympathy. Mount Olive, Beta Flock. Resolution for the family of Fannie Marie Diggs. We, the officers and members of the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Ada Epsilon Omega Chapter, Saginaw, Michigan, sincerely extend our deepest sympathy to our sister, Stacy Davis Diggs, and family in the passing of your loved one. When Jesus comes to reward his servants faithful to him, whether it is noon or night, Will he find us watching with our lamps all trimmed and bright? If at the dawn of the early morning he shall call us one by one, when to the Lord we restore our talent, will he answer thee, well done? We pause today to honor the memory of one who has been called from labor to reward, from con conquest to victory, from mere hope and the blessed art of living, to a greater hope above. 
resolved that we, the members of Eta Epsilon Omega Chapter, bow in humble submission to the will of God and com commend the bereaved family to him who sees all and knows every heart. Trust God who watches even the fall of the sparrow. We bid them hold on the faith and wish she was so securely anchored. Be it further resolved that we enter sympathetically into the sorrows of the bereaved and bid them hope through the master of all life that they shall see their loved one again for the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. The pains of death are past, labor and sorrow cease and life's long welfare close at last. Her soul is found in peace. Be it still further resolved that a copy of this resolution be presented to the family of Fannie Marie Diggs, humbly submitted the officers and members of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Eta Epsilon Omega Chapter, Janice L. Moore, President, Kimberly Horn, Vice President. Christ Kingdom Ministries Church family, send our sincere condolences to the family of Miss Fannie Marie Diggs on this second day of February and the year of our Lord, 2019. We pray that the Lord will fill the voids and strengthen you with his love and understanding as you go through the time of sorrow. We are confident, I say, and willing, willing rather to the absent from the body and to be present with the Lord, 2 Corinthians 5 and 8. To the entire Diggs family, we love you. Sincerely, sincerely, Edward L. Jackson, Apostle Edward and Maddie Jackson, Senior Pastor and Founders. To the family of Mrs. Marie Diggs, great and merciful is our God. He who believes in him shall never die, and with him shall walk on everlasting life. Condolences to the loving family of Fannie Marie Diggs. Whereas we, the family of Paradise Funeral Chapter, want the family to know that our prayers are with you at this time of your loss. Whereas the passing of your beloved mother, grandmother, sister, and friend is the will of God, there is a human tie that has been broken, which has caused a heartfelt pain. We are reminded within the word of God, Hebrews 13 and five, for he hath said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Therefore, be it resolved that we embrace the family with love. We cannot replace this precious jewel, but acknowledge that she will be greatly missed. Be it further resolved to the family that we know your loss is deep and your heart is great, but there is no, heart, no hurt that God cannot heal. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth the word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. John's 5, 24 through 26. Please accept our most sincere sympathies for the loss of your loved one. May the prayers of all people who love you bring solace to your soul. A copy of this resolution shall be given to the family as a token of our love and esteem, humbly submitted on this sixth day of February, 2019. Ivan E. Phillips, President, Owner. Letter of condolence to the family of Fanny Diggs. And God shall wipe away all tears from their hearts, and there should be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away, Revelation 21 and four. The officers and members of the Mount Olive Institutional Missionary Baptist Church extend our deepest sympathy to our members, brother Reggie and sister Stacy Diggs and family, the entire Diggs family and all connected family members and friends during the loss of your dear loved one, Fanny Diggs. Jesus said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let your heart not be troubled, neither let it be afraid. John 14, 27. God gives freely to all that ask, so ask him to provide peace at this time, for his peace surpasses all understanding and will guard your hearts and minds. We, the members of the Mount Olive Institutional Missionary Baptist Church, bow in humble submission 
to the will of God and commend you to him who sees and uh, who sees all and knows every heart and entreat you to console yourselves in the hope of a reunion that after life's remaining ills are past, that it is like healing oil to the wounded heart, comforted with, pa- with pleasing rather than sad thoughts. May God bless you and give you strength, peace, and comfort during this time. Humbly, humbly submitted, Mount Olive Institutional Missionary Baptist Church, Reverend Dr. Marvin T. Smith, Pastor. Say amen for Ebony. Thank you. Karen Cork is going to come now and assist us with the obituary. The obituary. Mrs. Fannie Marie Diggs was born March 3rd, 1946, in Birmingham, Alabama, the daughter of William Queen, William and Queen Mary Gibbs. She passed away Tuesday. January 29, 2019, at the age of 72 years. Fannie was a resident of Saginaw, Michigan. She attended Vassar High School and graduated class of 1964. Two months after graduation, Fannie married the love of her life, Willie Diggs. The two were married 49 years. She then attended Delta and studied nursing. She worked various jobs in healthcare, starting as a nurse's aide at Carroll State Hospital and later at Saginaw County Hospital, St. Mary's Hospital, and the Veterans Hospital. Fanny enjoyed baking, knitting, crocheting, traveling, and reading. She was a wonderful caretaker and homemaker. Although she took care of others for a living, she took care of her family best. A loving wife, caring mother, and adoring grandmother is how she will be cherished and remembered. Fanny was preceded in death by her husband, Willie Diggs, parents, William and Queen Mary Gibbs, daughter Charlotte Diggs Denwright, sisters Maddie Hubbard, Amelia Young, brothers Martin Burton, Edward Burton, Booker T. Gibbs, father and mother-in-law Cleotha and Vanella Barkas, and father-in-law Clyde Barkas Sr., sisters-in-law Marilyn and Hattie Mae Taylor, brother-in-law Clyde Barkas Jr. She leaves to treasure a lifetime of memories daughter Constance Tennille Diggs, sons Reginald and Stacy Diggs, Sam and Sandra Jenright, grandchildren Chantel and Sean Kelly, Gabrielle Hughes, Jeremy Neal, Braylon Diggs, Jaden Neal, Jamie Davis, great-grandchildren Callista and Terrell Kelly, Jordan, Jimmy, Bailey Davis, sisters Lucille Osborne, Ernestine Graham, Geneva Wesley, Shirley Garrison, brother Bernard Gibbs, sisters-in-law Evelyn Chambers, Carolyn Roberson, Gwendolyn Carl Harrison, Harris, Roslyn Barkas, brothers-in-law Peter and Christopher Barkas, a host of nieces, nephews, cousins, other relatives and friends, including special cousin Celestine and William Simmons. The family would like to express special thanks to Celestine Simmons, Dewan Nunnery, Grace Hospice, Janet Pruitt, Mount Olive Institutional Missionary Baptist Church, and House of Prayer Baptist Church. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. At this time, uh, Zulila, is that correct? All right, come on, sweetie. Let's say amen as she comes with a uh, selection. Amen. Come on, let's say amen as she comes. All right, God bless you.
me, let me stay. I am tired. I'm weak. I am worn through the storm, through the night. Lead me on to the light. Take my family, you can come forward to give brief expressions. We have the microphone to my right, to your left. It is reserved for you to come and give comments. Okay, let's see how many we have so we'll know how much time we have. Okay. If you plan on speaking, please begin to come this way so we'll know how much time we have. Thank you. Go ahead, Mother. First, get it under God, the head of my life. Put a pit, get some fruits. To the digs, Marie was my favorite. Just go out there. At times, may a man run, she on the other side, I'm on the other side. Getting that mail. And her kids, Reggie, Charlotte, I babysit them. She's a wonderful lady. The dad was wonderful too. I'm gonna miss that lady. I'm an old lady. No, I'm a young lady. <laughs> but I'm gonna mess her. But this is what I wanna say. You all hold your head up high. Mama loved y'all, and she was, she was waiting for you. But this is what I'm gonna say to you all. If you hear my home gone, don't worry about her. If you hear my home gone, don't, don't worry about Marie. Oh, if you hear the home gone, don't worry about her. She's just another child, child of God, on her way home. I got my religion early one Friday morning. I made a preparation. Lord, 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 I know no queen. Yeah, Don't worry about us 
She just another child, child of God, on her way home. See you in the morning, Marie. Honor to God, who is the head of our life, to Pastor Smith in the pulpit. Thank you. Um, we just stand up here to show our love because Miss Diggs and Mr. Diggs and Reggie and Connie is our family, and um, they mean the world to us. Yes. There's no word to say our neighborhood was in a neighborhood, we was a family. And um, Reggie and Connie and Stacy and the rest of the family, if you need anything, I'm there night and day. There's Amen. nothing that you can't ask Amen. that we, me, my sister Mary, you know, my, my father, my other sister, my aunt would not do. We there for you because you are our family. And don't think that your family is drilling down. We building it up because your mom, just like my mom, would always be with you in spirit, always be a part of your heart. And when you and Connie come together, you make a whole of her. So I love you guys, and my prayers are with you. Amen. Good morning. I really had nothing to say, but um, Margaret made me come. Well, I'm not good at public speaking. But anyways, I just want to say, um, Connie and Reggie, y'all in my prayers, and I got one memory. <laughs> when Miss Diggs, she used to pile us all up in that big old long Cadillac. <laughs> and she used to take us like wherever she was going, it didn't matter where she was going, we could go. You know, it was just like get in the car and then I remember Connie used to cut the grass on the lawnmower. I was like so jealous, like I wanted to drive the lawnmower. <laughs> But anyways, you guys are in my prayers. I love y'all. Hello, my name is Maddie Thompson, and I'm originally from Vassar, Michigan, and Marie was my best friend growing up, and I used to spend the night at her house. But I'm speaking for the ladies from Vassar. We, we grew up like family. We ate each other's house. And one memory I have, and I was talking to Doris, I had to be in, in the yard at, when the sun went down. And my mother did not play in the sun. Did, you weren't in the yard, bless you. <laughs> but I have to, Marie was bragging one day about her mother let her do anything. Um, she hadn't got it out of her mouth. And here come Miss Diggs, Miss Gibbs with a hand like that. And she had a switch and she put Marie back to the house. <laughs> I said, Lord, I won't brag on that. But Marie was a quiet, generous soul. And we're going to miss her. Because two years ago, my sister passed. And then my cousin passed last year, and then now Marie. Ladies, we have to get together. Right. Vassar was a family. We, everybody's related some kind of way on Vassar. Bless, bless everyone, and please keep the family uplifted. Marie got a whooping that day. <laughs> hey Amen, thank you so much, thank you so much. It is always good for the family to hear words of expression and love, and Amen. they appreciate it today. Yes, Lord. But as we all know that after today, their lives are gonna to return to somewhat of a normancy. It's gonna be yes. quiet. And so let's make the commitment to check on them, to reach out to them, and give yes. the same types of expressions yes. in the days to come. Yes. We'll be praying for you. Thank you so much for your words today. At this time, we'll have a selection, and then we'll come with the eulogy.
God, we spend most of our time doing two things. Most of our time is spent moving between two words. Hello and goodbye. In fact, psychologists suggest that the earliest words spoken by most children are those two words, hello and goodbye. It is difficult when the last word we speak to people is goodbye, which is the reason why we should make sure that goodbye is not our last word. Jesus knew that his departure was going to be quite difficult for those disciples. He had been preparing them for his departure for nearly three and a half years. And regardless of the setting, regardless of the timing, whenever he talked about he had to leave, they could not bear it. And so when his departure was as close to Calvary as possible, he gave these disciples these words. He said, let not your heart be troubled. That word trouble is do not come apart. Do not lose hope. Do not stop living as though there is no afterlife, as though as you have not heard the truth. And he goes on and he prepares them by saying to them, I am saying bye for now. But there's going to come a time when I'll say hello. All right. And he goes on and he begins talking about that moment when he will say hello again to them. I think, you know, every day is a good time to make sure we're not living with our last word being goodbye. Is that as we move between hello and goodbye, it's a good time to have a discussion about making sure that goodbye is not the last word we speak. Jesus begins talking about why their hearts should not be troubled why their lives should not come unraveled, why they should continue to go on living. That even though he was preparing to leave, it was not the end. And he begins talking about heaven. And I can only speak for myself, I want to go to heaven. <laughs> you know, it is amazing to me that there are so many people who, who do not want to go to heaven. And well, how do we know we want to go to heaven? Well, we see how do we get there. And once we get a sense of how do we get there, then we make the necessary preparations. But heaven is, heaven is an amazing place. And Jesus begins talking to them, the verses one and following about heaven. And he says, first of all, heaven is a real place. You would be surprised of how many people who do not believe heaven is a real place. There are many people who think that it's just a, you know, something in our imagination, some pie in the sky, but heaven is a real place. And not because I say it is, but because the word of God says it is. 
And what makes heaven heaven, I mean, is where is not that heaven, that, that God is where heaven is, but heaven is where God is. Yeah. Right. And wherever God is, that's where I want to be. Amen. It's where I want to be because, because of God, my life has been full of blessings. Because of God, God has protected me. Because of God, God has forgiven me. Because of God, I have life and I have it more abundantly. And I want to be where that God is. And that's what Jesus says. He says, do not let your hearts be troubled. So you believe in God and believe also in me. And now he begins to talk about heaven. He says, first of all, heaven is a real place. He says, I am going to my father's house. It's a real place. And again, for those of us who know God, we know God is with us on this side. But after this side, we go to be with the God who has been with us every day of our lives on this side. And who would not want to go and be with the one who has always been with us? I want to go where God is. And so goodbye does not have to be our last word. He says to those disciples, I'm going to a real place. But then he goes on, and here's another reason why I want to go to heaven. He says heaven is a remarkable place. It's real in my father's house. That's real. And then he says, it's a remarkable place because there are many mansions. And here Jesus is talking about roomy places. Which says, I don't have to tell anybody to save me a seat. I don't have to worry, you know, what I'm going to have when I get to heaven. I don't have to be jealous or, or envy of anybody else who has gone on before me. He says, in my father's house are many, what, mansions. It is a, a, a roomy place. And so, just like we say what God has for me on this side is for me. Get this, what God has for me on the other side. It's for me as well. I mean, so I'm excited about going to heaven. Heaven is a real place. I know what's going to happen to me when I die. Do you know what's going to happen to you when you die? The Bible tells us to be absent from the body is to be what? Present what? With the Lord. And there are some of us who have to go through the valley of the shadow of death. That is, we will die on this side. But then there are some of us we will be caught up to meet him and them in the air. And we'll be changed in the moment of a twinkling of an eye. But all of us have the opportunity to get to heaven. Amen. It's a real place. It's a remarkable place. But then it is also a reserved place. In my father's house are many mansions, roomy places. If it were not so, I would not have told you. And he says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. It's a reserved place. It's got your name on it. Listen, and, 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 and you don't have to be in a hurry to get there either. <laughs> now, I want to go, but I'm not in a hurry. I can go with that second group if the love is all right with me. Y'all can go with group number one. I'm in group number two. It is a reserved place. I go to prepare a place. And so there again, I'm, we're not sending up timber. We're not, we're not, you know, our good works is not adding a brick to our mansion. We're not working trying to get to heaven. The work has already been done for us to get to heaven. And I'll touch upon that in a moment. But it is a reserved place. When we get there, it will be there. Nothing's going to happen to it. 
I am going to prepare a place for you. Can't nobody keep you out of him. Aren't you glad about that? And, and, and Peter is not at the gate. Peter has no say so on who gets in and who does not. I want to go to heaven. <laughs> it is a real place. It is a remarkable place. It is a reserved place. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again to you and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you will be also. Isn't that good news? That goodbye doesn't have to be our last say. But then lastly, heaven, it is a, it is a resting place. Now John is a writer of this gospel. But John is also the revelator. John, he writes the last book of the New Testament. And John is, is talking about heaven. And John gets so caught up in talking about how heaven is going to be. He starts talking about what's not going to be in heaven. And he says, in heaven, there'll be no more pain. There'll be no more tears. There'll be no more sickness. There'll be no more dis disappointment. There'll be no need for faith. There, there, there'll be no problem. There'll be no wickedness. There'll be no evil. There'll be no temptation. He says, because the former things of life, they are no more. And so what John was literally saying is that all of the things that drain us on this side, that burden us on this side, that torment us on this side, those things will no longer exist on the other side. And we will rest from this life and rejoice with Jesus for the rest of our time. Time that has been will not be any more. And so we spend our time moving between hello and goodbye. And if goodbye had to be our last word, it would be unbearable. But you know, Saying goodbye is not as hard when you know you can say hello again. There's so many people I can't wait to say hello to again. The death of a brother, the death of a mother, and on and on and on. But, but you know, and, and, but, it, but, but, but I know one of these days I'm going to say hello to them again. Because the word of God is true. I believe the word of God is true. And so we say goodbye today. But we can say hello again. And then we wonder, well, how do we get to heaven? Jesus does not leave us to guessing. Aren't you glad? He didn't leave us to guessing. He, Thomas says, now wait a minute. You know, where, where are you going? How, how do we get there? And Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And no one comes to the Father but by me. And what Jesus is literally saying is, the cross is the only ladder tall enough to reach heaven. It's the only way. We can't go around the cross. Yes. <laughs> in fact, um, the late Adrian Rogers, he was in London, and he said that there was a, a nightclub called the Gates of Hell. <laughs> 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 
And, and, and he, was, he, was, he was preaching at a church called Calvary. And, and he, was, and he was, had just pulled up and he was on his way into the church. And a man flagged him down and said, how did you get to the gates of hell? He was trying to get to that club. <laughs> And so, and so, and so he just told a man, when you pass Calvary, you'll run right into the gates of hell. And I don't know who that is. If you bypass Calvary, you'll run directly into the gates of hell. But aren't you glad that we can stop at Calvary? We can come to the cross of Jesus Christ. We spend the most of our time in this life moving backwards and forward between saying hello and saying goodbye. But saying goodbye is not so hard when you know you're gonna say hello again. Rest now, rest now. Rest, mother, but all we'll see you in the morning. Let's celebrate. Death is not the end. Jesus made it possible that death is not the end. Amen. Amen. Please stand for the committal. After the committal, we will exit the sanctuary of this order. The ushers and others will assist us with the flowers. Uh, they will lead us out. The clergy will follow. Then the pallbearers, along with Paradise staff, then the family, and of course, friends. As soon as we've left the, the graveside, the Mount Olive Church has a meal of fellowship prepared for the family. For as much as it has pleased God to call to himself the soul of Sister Benny, we now offer her body to the grave that awaits it, that her ashes will return to ashes, her dust to dust, and her imperishable soul will forever be with God. Let us pray. We realize, God, that every good and perfect gift comes from you. We thank you for this gift. We thank you for the lessons we learned from her life. We thank you for the joy. We thank you for the memories. And now, O oh God, we commend the family into your hands, knowing that you and you alone can carry them through this difficult season. Bless them as only you can. It is in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that we pray. Amen. Amen. The ushers, would you please come?
and brothers and sisters. <laughs>